Hey everyone, this is Corey with Stafford ZDC, and today we're going to be doing a full review on the Luft Concepts Avant. So this knife was designed by a fellow YouTuber, uh, you might know him, uh, Bearded Gear, Jake Wright, as well as another man by the name of Ryan Rimmer. Uh, the two of them came together and designed this knife uh, sometime about two years ago, um, in the summer of 2020 was when the initial idea was announced for these. Uh, the pre-order was done sometime in 2021, and these knives were delivered uh, sometime in uh, either early March or uh, late February here uh, in 2022. I'm currently filming this at the end of March, but they were delivered ahead of time, and um, my unboxing video will post before the review video of this. Uh, some really, really cool stuff uh, from the unboxing that I will include in this review later, uh, just briefly touching on it. First things first, let's do some size comparison and I will read some specs. But of course we have the Benchmade Bugout, as well as the 84mm Victorinox Cadet. So you can see that it is a relatively large knife overall, uh, not huge by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely a full-size knife, uh, with a blade length of 3.3 inches and a handle length of 4.552 inches. It's uh, definitely got a lot of room on it. You have an overall length of 7.812 inches with a blade stock thickness of 0.138 inches, which uh, does feel a lot thinner than that due to that crown spine. And uh, the thickness behind the edge is actually listed on the website here, which is 0 0.015 inches. And this is uh, pretty lightweight too at 2.95 ounces. Uh, these were made by Rayon over in China, produced for them as OEM work. And uh, yeah, with that kind of technical stuff out of the way, let's talk about my experience with this knife. Now, when I got this knife, I was not thrilled by it. Um, the Ergos initially didn't really feel like they were going to work in my hand. Uh, you do have a Spyderco wire clip here. And I believe these are also set up to take uh, Lynch Northwest clips uh, for replacements. And holding it down here, uh, it wasn't the most comfortable for me. Um, getting that clip right in this area of my hand, you can kind of see right where that lands and how squeezing that caused a little bit of an issue just due to that ramp. But choking up to this finger choil area, which is absolutely meant to be used, uh, it kind of alleviates that issue because now that ramp is hanging off of my hand and really isn't pushing into anything hard. So that made life a lot better cutting with this. Um, just something worth noting that, and it's something I kind of got used to over the times that I use this knife, whereas initially it felt kind of weird to be holding it this way due to the spacing between the fingers here. You can see this big kind of chunky area kind of really separates your fingers. Uh, so it felt a little odd at first, but the more that I used it, the more comfortable uh, that I got with it. Uh, continuing on ergonomics, um, the, like I said, the finger choil area is definitely a necessity. I wear a large size glove, and this is just kind of how it fits my hand when I'm choked up. And when I'm choked back, it's not very comfortable due to that clip, as I said, but it does fit in my hand still. So plenty of room if you have larger hands than I do. If I were to come up in like a hammer grip, you can see just how much handle is sticking out here. So definitely room for bigger hands. The thumb ramp is nice. It's positioned well, where I don't feel like this is going to go anywhere. And it doesn't feel like it's going to twist in my hand either. Uh, this is a fairly blocky handle, and it's 4.486 um, inches thick. So it's less than half an, a half an inch. So it's not overly thick, but being squared off, it is enough to really keep that steady in your hand when you're cutting. Now talking about cutting, this has a wonderful hollow grind on it, which I think you can kind of see on this angle. It's kind of tough to see the swoop, but you can kind of see the way that this light reflects off of there. And it's, uh, it thins out a lot as you get down towards the edge and it cuts beautifully. It has a nice uh, belt satin finish on this model here, there's also a PVD coated one. And yeah, this this hollow grind is just 
it's wonderful. It gets so thin. As I said, uh, 0 0.015 inches behind the edge, tapering down to oh, almost nothing. And this had little to no resistance when cutting through cardboard. Um, funny enough, I didn't realize the blade was as thick as it was until I looked at the website here. 0.138 seems a lot thicker than I would have thought for this, uh, this blade stock. And sorry, I'm looking just to see if I have my calipers laying here. And I don't. Uh, maybe I'll take a measurement and put it in here. Uh, maybe I won't. But I almost find it hard to believe. Um, I guess the reason for that is because you're not looking at any kind of crisp lines. It's all nicely rounded over. But you can see how it's, uh, these edges are rounded. You have a nice crown spine. Very, very comfortable to uh, put your thumb up against. Uh, whatever it might be, whereas it's a little more square with the edges knocked down back in this area, so it's still quite comfortable. But yeah, with the hole and no other, you know, nothing impeding the cutting path, uh, this was a pleasure to cut with. The hollow grind's nice and thin, and just, it ate through cardboard like nothing, and uh, basically any EDC type of task you might have, uh, this worked fantastic for. Now let's talk a little bit about the action on this knife. Uh, the action to start was pretty garbage out of the box. Um, you can see now it's dropping my thumb and flicking shut with no issue. Uh, there's no blade play or anything. This is just tuned and uh, oiled with uh, Gunny Glide and some KPL Heavy on the detent ball. But something that I found was that the detent was really stiff initially, where this flipper tab really hurt my finger. Um, but because I've gotten used to it, uh, it's been a lot better and more of a light switch, or sorry, more of a push button style of approach, or it's still, still a light switch in a way. You still have to sweep down just due to the shape of this, but as I missed the flip there, it certainly has, uh, broken in nicely over time. And before when you depress the lock bar, it would go, you know, maybe to here. And then really you'd have to force it the rest of the way down or give it some nice hard shakes to get it to close whereas now uh, it just drops right to my thumb and a little flick gets it nice and shut with no issue something worth noting about the action is that this is running with a detent ball ramp which is going to be kind of basically impossible to show you on the inside here but what that means is that there is really no point where this is locked right here and any sort of movement the detent ball is up on the blade already there's no um kind of clutch area where you're slipping off of the detent ball and getting stuck on it like some other knives might be so this just glides along this ramp and you can feel there's a little more resistance when on that ramp like right in this area it feels almost squeaky but that's because i'm being very particular and exact about it. It's not sounding squeaky or really feeling weird in one motion, but you can tell when it's on the ramp. And uh, that ramp, right-handed, makes it drop really nicely. Uh, you just have to make sure it drops all the way down, because if you get it stuck on that ramp, it's like right here it is, you go to flick it shut, it clicks open. So you just have to make sure you break that ramp area right about there. Flick it, shuts no problem. And um, yeah, the detent did lighten up over time. So it's not quite as good as it was initially. I mean, I like a stiff detent, especially for flicking. Um, but I do appreciate, for my finger's sake, uh, that it flips easier now. So that is definitely something that, uh, it's nice. It's a little bit light, but it was a little too hard before it broke in. So. I can't really complain about that, you know, too much as it is functioning perfectly. And, you know, it's it's working well for both deployment methods. So, you know, kind of take that as you will. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's working and it is a good detent. It's not amazing. It's not blowing me away. But it's good. It does what it needs to do. And I don't really have any major complaints about it. Now, this was a $300 knife. This is $299. 
uh, micarta, titanium, uh, M390 blade steel. And I think they did like 150 or 300 of each. It was a limited run uh, overall. Mine is number 87, which you can see right on the inside there. And then they also mark, I believe, it is the inside of the lock bar. But maybe it's not. Um, there's another spot on this knife that I can't remember where. Where they put, yeah, it's on the lock bar. Can't really see it. There you go. You can see right in here, it says Avant M390. So that's really the only markings on this knife. It is completely sterile otherwise. So that's kind of cool to see. There's no, uh, you know, no other markings besides the logo right there on the flipper tab, which I'm struggling to get in focus, but there you go. There is the logo for Luff Concepts right on the flipper tab, which disappears into your handle when open. So a nice sterile look for you. Uh, this is black micarta, by the way. It's just really dry. And it shipped incredibly dry, uh, as did the action in general from Rayot. So this improved uh, the action a ton when I oiled it, as I said. And this micarta will look a lot better uh, with some oil over time. So that's something to keep in mind. As a patina develops, it will look a lot nicer. And the last thing I wanted to touch on is the uh, kind of the packaging and everything that you got with this. Um, I don't have it all handy. It's all kind of packed away because I am going to be selling this, which I'll get into in a moment. But it uh, it came with a fanny pack and a bunch of stickers and a birth card and uh, all sorts of fun stuff. And that's really cool. You're doing a pre-order, presumably at a lower price than uh, what you might charge otherwise. I know they sold some of these at Blade Show Texas. Um, I don't know what the price was there. I think it was like three fifteen or something like that. Um, I don't know that for sure though. I'm not. Do not quote me on that. Um, unless I'm right, you know, then go ahead and let me know. But I don't. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, they uh, they didn't include any of that fun stuff, like the sticker packs and the fanny pack, with uh, the Blade Show orders. So that's really cool that they gave their uh, their early supporters from the initial pre-sale, uh, something kind of to say thank you and remember it and make it special. And that's something I want to see way more, uh, way more people doing. You know, with some stuff, you get like a pouch and some stickers, you know, whatever it might be, but like a fanny pack and some extra bonus stickers and all sorts of cool little things. Like, that's really cool. It was a fun experience to open this up and not just the fun experience of, oh, new knife. It was a twist and turn with all sorts of goodies that I was not expecting. So, really cool, and I hope more makers take note of that. Um, cool that Rayout was able to do that for them, unless they did it all themselves when they got the uh, knives in, which would be pretty cool too. So, final conclusion on this is that the Avant's a pretty good knife. Um, it's got some inspiration from a ton of different pieces. Um, I've heard people say the handle looks like a Strider. The blade looks like a Koenig Arius. Um, I see the American Blade Works Model 1 in this handle area, and as well as just the micarta in general. Uh, basically, if this was like rounded right here, it would look exactly, in my opinion, like a American Blade Works Model 1 with kind of a uh, hybrid between the American Blade Works blade and a Koenig Arius blade. Uh, but, you know, overall, a pretty, pretty neat design. It's not necessarily my favorite thing, but I did buy this to give some support to Jake and Ryan from their pre-order because I did want to try one of these out, and I'm, I'm really glad that I did. Um, I'm really happy with this. It's not something that's going to stick around just because I have other things that are major keepers for me for sentimental reasons um, and whatnot that are just going to take pocket time away from this, like my Arius... Or like my TRM Atom. You know, these are things that, uh, they mean a lot more to me than this knife does. And, uh, this one is going to a good home. You guys will be seeing this again, I'm sure, at some point. Uh, if not on YouTube, then definitely on Instagram over with, a uh, Backpack B. Brent's gonna be buying this guy from me, uh, later this week. So, but overall, if you see one of these on the secondary market and you like the design, this is a great EDC knife. 
multiple opening methods and uh, just well done. And they break in really nicely. I'm glad I gave mine time. I was ready to sell it the day I got it. I did my unboxing video and I offered it to uh, our local knife group with uh, Lefty EDC, Backpack B, and uh, quite a few others. Uh, knife Dude here on YouTube as well. And uh, Brent was interested at the time and was interested as well just uh, last night when I checked in with him. So glad things lined up and he's able to get this version as well as the one he has, the coded version. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I got to experience the knife. So I'm going to leave it there before I ramble on and on and on. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Take care.